Peace, 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 love, light of healing, peace, love, light of healing, peace to the gods, peace to the earth. Y'all climb on in, climb on in. How y'all feeling? How y'all doing? Peace, gods, peace, earths. Blessings, blessings. Y'all climb on in. How y'all feeling? How y'all doing? Peace, peace. Peace, earths, peace, gods. Shalom lacha. Shalom alaikum. Blessings be unto you, family. Man, I was just finally, I had a chance to sit back and go through some of these emails because I'm finna start back going live. I was gonna try to get a couple of lives in before I end up in San Diego, uh, California for Earth Day on the 23rd. And man, I seen so many questions about sugar. A lot of our people is questioning sugar now because it's big anti-sugar movement, you know, and uh, it's just crazy to me. And it's like, I gotta keep re-explaining myself, saying the same things, even though when y'all follow my teachings and y'all apply the knowledge, you know, y'all see how quickly the body can heal itself. You see how quickly you get energy, you feeling better, you get your vitality, you get your power back. You know what I'm saying? You're not tired no more. You escaping from adrenal fatigue, yet it's still all these new teachings from a different people that have a different biochemical molecular structure of you is starting to cause doubts in you. When your anatomy is different, your physiology is different, your biochemical molecular structure is different, the functioning of the atoms that makes up your cells is different, the, uh, the, the biodiversity of bacteria inside of you is different, but yet and still, I don't know if it's because they white coats. I don't know if it's because they have MDs and degrees and they've been to school for nine years, but they are not you and they don't have your molecular structure. So why is doubt setting in and reprogramming is setting in and you getting scared questioning the information when you see that it's healing the body? And that's the thing with our people. Uh, our culture have been stripped from us. Our minds and our identity have been stripped stripped from us to a point where we can be feeling good. We can be feeling better. But if a so-called doctor with a white coat on uh, walk up to you and say you not feeling better, then you would take on that placebo or no placebo effect and you would purposely make yourself not feel better even though you was feeling better because the doctor said you wasn't feeling better. We have to get out of that ideology. We have to get out of that mindset. There's a big, big, big fat pushing movement going on where everybody is on these keto diets. Everybody is kicking their body into ketosis for they can basically create keto bodies for they can burn fat and try to bypass sugar. And I'm trying to tell you, I'm going to sit up here and tell you now, is there benefits from it? Yes, you will lose weight. But the fact that they saying that you're bypassing fructose and glucose and you're not using sugar, uh, these essential carbon constituent chains that you need for life, to get energy is a complete lie. And I'm going to show y'all why. There, there's, there's two essential things that you truly, truly need in life. True essential, two essential things. The first thing is the breath. You need the breath. You need oxygen. Uh, you need the oxygen for all of your cells to actually form, to, uh, perform, and it can yield ATP from the mitochondria. The second thing that you need is carbon. You have to have carbon, y'all. And carbon is your sugar. There is no way to bypass carbon. I don't care if you eat an all meat diet, because guess what? When you eat an all meat diet or you eat these carnivore diets, which you are not a carnivore, I keep breaking this down and explaining this, showing you the anatomy of your body, showing you how the actual organs are, are even structured different than other people, showing you that you have a low uh, acidity inside of your stomach. You don't even produce the high amount of hydrochloric acids that other races produce to even break down these proteins. But let's just say this. Let's just say that you go on this carnivore diet and you eat these high compact amino acid proteins do you realize it still have to go through a process where it get broken down and then these proteins get broken down into sugar for you can metabolize and use that sugar for atp so there is no there's no metabolic process that you can go through without it breaking down into sugar even if we're talking about ketones and you go through something called lipolysis so say if somebody eat fat right you eat fat 
This stuff breaks down. You have to go through something called lipolysis. This is where you get lipids from. It creates triglycerol. This is where you get your oils from. All right, so now, don't, don't get me twisted. It's going to create ketone bodies. You're going to burn fat. You're going to feel amazing at first because it's, it's doing something different from the body because you're not using fructose and glucose uh, in the beginning. But check this out. When it goes through its end stages of its metabolic process, guess what it go through? It go through something called a crib cycle. This crib cycle is called a citric acid cycle. Guess what citric acid needs to actually break down these foods so you can yield ATP, ADP, and AMP? Sugars called carbon. You can't, so, so you have three sources of what you would call energy. You have carbohydrates, which they would call sugars. These are things like your galactose. These are things like your fructose. These are things like your glu uh, glucose. You have uh, some complex, um, uh, you have some complex uh, saccharides too. So the, the ones I just mentioned is called monosaccharides. These are what you call simple sugars. Your galactose come from the woman's breast milk. That's what cows drink on with the uh, the calf drink on with the big cow. That's, that's galactose. That's literally your first essential foods when you're coming out of a wound if you're a mammal. You, you get on those sugars. That's galactose. Then the next thing up from that, well, it's supposed to, it's supposed to be your fructose if you're really following the way that nature uh, constructed man and how they're supposed to eat. All right? But a lot of people switch straight over to proteins and things because they don't have the knowledge available to them and they don't know how to truly, truly feed their child to grow their child into a man child or a woman child. So the first essential thing is, amino, uh, is an actual monosaccharide called galactose. That's your first simple sugar that you need. Notice that galactose is like 17.0% inside, uh, inside of the milk. And then when you look at protein, protein is like a 0.7%. So it shows you how much sugar is yielding over protein, showing you that even as infants, we don't want proteins, we need sugars. And then if you look at breastfed babies, look at how big they are without proteins. We talking about 0.7 proteins inside of breast milk. And then we talking about over 17.0 zero all the way up to 32.0 of galactose sugar. So what do the baby need then? The baby don't need the protein. The baby's not looking for that. The baby's looking for those sugars and then they have a, a adequate amount of fatty acids in there too that further break down into sugar. They're coming up with these new lies and acting like that. Well, well, sugars can convert into fatty acids, but fatty acids cannot convert back into sugars in human beings. What human beings are you talking about? Which specific species of humans are you talking about? Are you talking about so-called African Americans? Are you talking about Caucasians? Are you talking about Mongolians? Are you talking about so-called Asians? Are you talking about Homo sapiens sapiens? Are you talking about Homo erect uh, erectus? Or are you talking about Neanderthals? Are you talking about Dravidians? Which classification of a so-called human are you talking about? Because again, all of our biochemical molecular structure is different. My body does something different than your body. Your body does something different than their bodies. All of our bodies do something different, but it comes together as a collective whole to create this biodiversity of what we call the ecological system. There is nothing wrong with being different. Quit pushing y'all diets on my people, man. And then my people are sitting back listening to everybody, which is very dangerous anyway, because y'all don't know how to listen and then have a spirit of discernment or y'all don't know how to listen and actually study the information. Y'all listen and then y'all immediately come to a conclusion without research and informed doubt. So now I got to go back over this stuff over and over again when I'm trying to level up and teach different. It's so much that I want to explain and express to y'all, but I keep having to go back to kindergarten because y'all are letting other people infiltrate y'all minds without studying what other people are saying. If it's working, it's working. How's something going to work for you? And then you have somebody that say they have experience because they have an MD doctor and license over another people, not even over your molecular structure, but you will let them form doubt inside of your head and convince you that something is wrong with you when you intuitively feel good. It's time for you to grab your mind back, brother and sister. It's time for you to stand on your own beliefs and your own principles, brothers and sisters. It's time for you to stand up for yourself and take hold of your identity. You are not like everybody else. How much scientific data do I got to show y'all? Now, again, let's talk back about the sugars. So you have three essential carbohydrates. 
The first monosaccharide, which is a simple sugar, is called galactose. This is where the galactose is supposed to be given to you between the ages of one to three. Then something else called fructose start getting introduced to you between the ages of one to uh, between the ages of uh, of two to here on out. Then once you get up more, say about I say about because we don't, we didn't give Eli we didn't give Eli uh, glucose or vegetables and stuff until he was like two. Before then, he was on the breast milk. Then from the breast milk, he went straight into fruits. Then after a couple years, then we started putting him on glucose. And look how intelligent my three-year-old is. He's been to be four, but this is one of the most intelligent, melanated beings to ever step foot on this planet. Going And, and we raised him according to the right liver or what they call the right diet. So when he first was born, we put him on galactose. He was on galactose for, I mean, he just literally was weaned off the breast because he finna turn four. He'd been weaned off for probably like nine months now. So he was on galactose as an actual liquid or what we'll call H3O2 constituents for a whole three years. Then once he turned one, we started introducing fructose to him. And these were solid fruits. But between there, around six months, he still was sucking on the breast milk, the galactose, but we was introducing fructose juice into him. He was drinking a lot of juices like coconut waters and things like that. Then once he turned two, this one, we started handing him actually solid fruits. He had all his teeth in his mouth. He was producing trypsin. He produced an ambulate. So now he can start biting into his apples. We can peel oranges from him, uh, navel oranges with seeds in them. He can eat these things like that. Then once he literally hit two and a half, three, this one, we start giving him all these different types of vegetables, talking about glucose. But notice, all of these are talking about simple or what you will call monosaccharides that I'm talking about. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Just different variations of sugars or how the actual chemical constituents is mixed around, which is going to make glucose different from fructose or fructose different from glucose. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying that fats is a bad thing. Fats is a good thing because that's what your actual brain needs to, actual fun to actually function properly. This is called your lipid base chemistry. But guess what that fat does? When that fat breaks down and go into its ketones and ketosis and you know your insulin don't need, you don't need insulin. Or guess what it does though? It still breaks down into carbon. What is carbon family? Carbon is sugar. There is no process in the body or no process in life creation at all that can go through any type of electrical exchange without using carbon. Now let's go back to our bodies. Our bodies is different. You are made of melanin, neuromelanin, eumelanin, theomelanin. That you are, you are a carbon copy of the cosmos once the sun goes down. That blackness up there is your reflection. So in order to keep that polymer melanin, you're doing the things that it's doing. You have to keep replacing your cells with this substance. Guess what this substance that make up melatonin and serotonin is? It is nothing but carbon and carbon is nothing but sugar. You need sugar. And let's not to mention that I mention all the time, sugar is a high essential energy. When you look at proteins, proteins are only operating at what y'all? 9,000 angstroms of energy per 10 units. But if you look at fruits, Fruits are operating at 12,000 angstroms of energy per 10 units. So if you're looking for essential fuel, essential fuel to actually bring this, the cell's vitality by way of the mitochondria producing ATP, it's going to be a high fruit diet or what we call a high sugar diet. Now, don't get me twisted. I'm not talking about sucrose. I'm not talking about maltose. I'm not talking about destrose. I'm not talking about these complex sugars that they make in laboratories or that they make to have you actually addicted to because it turns on your reward centers and it kicks in dopamine when you eat these things. And this is the reason why you have a sweet tooth and how it closely reflects or it's like a melanin-like polymer, meaning it acts as melanin when it's not. So you get addicted to these things and get addicted to this taste because it's damn near part of the cocaine family. I don't care about the way the spelling is different in sugar cane and cocaine. I'm thinking about the actual fundamental listening factors to it. Cane, cane. It still sounds the same. And then it shows you how sugar cane is more addictive than cocaine and how sugar cane actually kills you 
quicker than cocaine. When you actually take the sugar molecules out of the sugar cane, isolate the sugar, then you heat it up the same thing you do with corn. You strip the corn and then you strip all of the high fructose from the corn and then you put heat to it. These things become neurotoxins because you turn them into a drug. That's a different type of sugar than natural sugar that naturally accumulates in your fruits and your vegetables, family. We are frugivores by nature. We are not omnivores. We are not herbivores and we damn show sure not no damn carnivores. We are frugivore by nature. Now, let's expand on frugivore. Just because I say frugivore, that don't mean I'm just talking about fruits, berries, and melons. There is over 22 different thousand types of fruits alone in the USA. If we're going to talk about worldwide, we're talking about over 22 million different types of fruits. And I'm talking about just groups. I'm not even talking about the selective ones inside the groups. So quinoa is a fruit. It is the reproductive part of the plant. You see what I'm saying? Cabbage is a fruit. It is a reproductive flower part of the plant. Most of your beans are fruits. So there's bad fruits and good fruits that we can eat too. Because we damn sure can't eat grains and most of your grains are fruits. It's called a caryopsis. We, we sure can't eat beans because beans are very gnarly and, and, and it's full of phytic acid and our bodies can't adequately break them down. But these come from the Akeem fruit group. It's still a fruit. It's the ovary of the actual plant. So any reproductive part of a plant is called a fruit. So just because I say I'm a frugivore, it don't mean I strictly eat fruits, berries, and melons. I eat more than that. And I still eat cooked, food, cooked fruits here and there. But I am a frugivore essentially because all I put in my body is fruit. Sometimes I do roots. Sometimes I do root like a sweet potato that's full of potassium monophosphate. Sometimes I do other things like that. But essentially, 99% of my diet is fruits. That's why I say I'm a frugivore. Y'all are looking at these things wrong. Chickpeas or what we call garbanzo beans is a fruit. It is the reproductive part of the plant. Y'all have to start studying, family. We are, we are frugivores. We are not carnivores. Then y'all y'all eating all these fat, eating all these meats, and then y'all coming to me because y'all going into ketosis and it's messing up y'all liver and y'all going through all of this protein. Guess what protein have to take a path? Protein take a path called... uh uh. It's called uh, gluconeogenesis. Protein go through something called glucose neogenesis. Gluconeogenesis is actually breaks down the proteins into simple amino acids. Then these simple amino acids is actually metabolized and broke down into what family? Uh-oh, glucose. So even when you eat proteins, the body's using amino acid structures to regrow the cellular tissue. But guess what it's using when it needs to fire off ATP and get uh, and actually get energy? It's, it's using the glucose that it broke down from the amino acids. So even your DNA structure that's made of acids break down into what? Sugar. Remember lipolysis or glycolysis? These are talking about the actual metabolic exchange to break down lipids, to break down fats, to break down proteins, and to break down fructose and glucose into what? Sugar. Carbon constituent chains. There is nothing that you can eat in this life that's not going to break down to sugar. You can let these people out of you all you want, but look, tell them to test your body. Let's quit testing their body and using their bodies as the standards or as the statistics because we're going to always fail because our molecular makeup is different. That's the reason why your ass is sick because everything is based off of them. All of their prognosis is based off of them. Nothing is based off our molecular structure. That's why we need our own hospitals. That's why we need our own nutritional guides. That's we, we, we need our own food pyramid. We need our own medicine-less hospitals. We need our own herbal formulas. We need our own mineral charts because even our minerals is different. Our minerals are iron phosphate. The Caucasian minerals is actually calcium. When you look at the Asian mineral, it's zinc and aldine. Everybody have a different mineral. Everybody have a different food. Everybody have a different geographical location. Everybody have a different salt, uh, uh, different salt, uh, H3O2 or H2O when it comes to them because they don't naturally produce H3O, but we do. Naturally, in fat ratio, everything about our inner beings, our internal and eternal organs is different from everybody else. So if somebody telling you, somebody's not you, haven't studied you telling, telling them about who you are, or they trying to come to you and tell you what to do with your health and how to do with your body and what foods you need to be, you need the first thing you need to do is sit back and be like, hold the hell on. We're not even the same people. Not only are we not the same people, but our molecular structures is different. What is this information backed by? 
Is it backed by who you are or who we are? Because we are different. And different don't mean it have to be war. Different don't mean it have to be hate. Different don't mean it have to be dislike. But we have to acknowledge the fact that we are freaking different. So let's stop following their diets and their nutritional guides and all this other bullshit that they teaching us. See, it ain't bullshit to them because it works for them. It's bullshit to you because, look, y'all still coming to me by the thousands. I, get, I, I send out thousands of orders monthly, y'all. We get hundreds and hundreds of orders weekly. We got so many consultations for cancer, for STD, prostate cancer, pelvic floor ripping. We have so many. Look, we have so many consultations. We backed up till the end of June, y'all. So y'all can't tell me that that bullshit working. It's not. So to go on my email and see all of this doubt and see just because some new information out. And then, you know me, I'm going to do my due diligence. I'm going to see the face behind this new information and to see that it's not even somebody that looks like us is very, very overwhelming, family. Because it's like, damn, all the work I'm putting in, all the work. How are you doubting? How? And then it's coming from people that actually have testimonies, people that's feeling better. And then just because it's a white and this shows you that subliminal programming is a mother effer, y'all. This shows you that we still have this inferiority complex, y'all. We have to have that for you to know that you're feeling good, for you to know that you're feeling better, for you to have this right information to intuitively actually vibrate and resonate on a certain frequency. And then you hear something from a so-called doctor just because they have a doctorate's MD degree and they tell you something that goes against every gut grinching feeling in your body and it creates doubt in your head. We have a whole lot of healing to do as a family, y'all. You are frugivore by nature. Not only do your outside physiology and anatomy say so, but your inside says it too. Even your biomolecular structure when we come to autonomy and we start looking at the so-called Negro on an atomic level, when we study the structure and the functioning of its cells, it screams frugivore. You are a god. You are a goddess. You are a king and you are a queen. We are the royals of this land. We have to be on a royal diet. The frugivore diet is the highest consciousness diet that you can eat. It expands your consciousness. It is full of anthocyanins. It is full of bioflavonoids. It is full of biophotons. It is full of, of all these different things you need to operate on a godlike being. No other food can do that. Some vegetables can, but only thing that can have that high yielding energy is the food that grows the closest to the sun. Because you are children of the sun. We are sun people. That's why we can eat the sun, but no other race on planet Earth can eat the freaking sun. If you got another race, tell me. And don't say Arabia or uh, 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 Arabs. Because if you look at them and you look at their molecular structure, they're black skin too. They're dark skin too. So, so we have to get out of this mindset that, that we all can have the same diet. Birds don't have the same diet. I explain this all the time. A parakeet eat fruit. Hummingbirds eat nothing but nectar. Give a hummingbird a piece of roll kill, it would die. Vultures don't eat nectar nor eat fruit. It only wants what? Carcass of dead animals because it's a, what, carnivore. So in the bird kingdom, there's over seven different diets for each different bird, but it's all classified as the cow of the, uh, the fowl kingdom. Even when we get into mammals, different mammals eat different things. You have herbivore, herbivore mammals. You have, they eat nothing but grains and grass. Then you have carnivore mammals. So when we even, you have a mountain lion. They eat nothing but fish. Then you actually have a lion in the jungle that like to eat gazelles, zebras, and all types, and pig, wild pigs, and boars, and all types. But they both still lions. They both are part of the feline kingdom. So we can go through everything in nature. Everybody got a different diet, a different ge geographical location. But the moment you get to so-called human beings, we all, we all look different. You can see the physical difference. You can even see it inherited in our characteristics and in our talents. But we supposed to eat the same thing. Bullshit. Let's wake up. Let's grow up. It's time to grow up, man. Like, when are y'all going to start taking a stance? Standing on something. We need to start standing on something. Quit letting these people trick you out of your healing. Because that's exactly what's going on. So now it's just this big old ketone keto diet movement where everybody eating carnivore diet. You want to eat meat, meat, meat. High in fats, high in fats, high in fats. Guess what they be breaking down to, though? Putrefaction, of course. But guess what the essential parts of your body going to use from that meat? 
Oh, the sugars. Then it's going to use the protein to rebuild the molecular structure. But guess what? The protein is going to break down. Oh, two sugars. <laughs> Everything you eat gonna break down the sugar. And now they pushing a the mo movement. Cancerous cells feeds off sugar. If you got cancer, stay away from sugar. Every freaking cell in the body eats sugar. Whether it's a cancerous cell, whether it's a benign cell, whether it's a, mal a malignant cell, whether it's a completely perfect healthy cell, all of them gonna eat sugar because sugar is their essential necessity food that they need to eat to fire off, to fire off ATP. That's kind of like talking about somebody that have some type of uh, of mental mentally challenged. You know, they look and experience life differently. Just because they look and experience life different and, and their body is deformed, they got to eat a different food. No, they're going to eat the same food that their family eat. Even when you're on a feeding tube and you got to stick these liquids into the feeding tube. Guess what? It's just the broken down part of the whole food that you eat. But it's still what? Sugars. Now, the question y'all should be asking yourselves is this. Why is there such a pushback on high sugar diets? Why is there such so pro why is the promotion pushing a high keto diet, a, a, a carnivore diet? Y'all don't think it's something going on here? The moment that, that I start getting fruits out there real, real good to the community, to, the, to my community, because don't you got other people pushing this diet that's not me because everybody know that the superior diet would be the indigenous people diet. So anybody can convert to our diet because we have the highest diet. So anybody can convert to a frugivore diet and heal the body. Anybody can convert to a frugivore diet and have a better uh, uh, neurological output. Anybody can convert into a frugivore diet and heal the body with H302 and, and go through a detoxification mechanism because our everything we do is, is 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 highly superior in genetics so of course if you adapt to our diet you can heal of course if you adapt to our way of living and culture not your our way of living and culture you got to tap back and see our identity it will bring you to spirituality of course if you would notice and they do that when they adapt to our rap you see them adapting to the way we sing you see when they start get like everybody knows who really the gods in the earth out here only people that don't know is the people that's the gods and earth, which is the craziest shit ever. Everybody know who the gods is, but the gods. Ain't that a, such a cliche? Everybody know where the power is, except the people who truly have the power. So, of course, an all-fruit diet will heal everybody. So, I'm not saying that they can't eat our diet. They can. We can't eat theirs, family. When are we going to learn that? When are we going to learn that? So anybody can eat the indigenous diet. Anybody can eat the melanin ancient beans diet. Anybody can adapt to a frugivore diet and, 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 and use the benefits from it. But you can't adapt to everybody else's diet, family. And we're seeing that. We're seeing it. Man. My bad, y'all. Reading all these, look, I got all these, e reading all these emails did something to me because all of them is talking about sugar. Sugar, sugar. Well, I watch this from Dr. Wooty Woo Woo. And then I go on YouTube, that 10 million uh, subscribers. I'm like, damn, then you start going through the subscriber list for the ones that show them. Then it's all of my people. And I'm like, dang, it's, it's, it's back to the uh, 325 A.D., Pope Constantine, how he created Christianity and he pushed Christianity on my people. Now everybody believing in a Caucasian Jesus. It's the same type of ideology, the same conceptual ideology that's keeping my people suppressed, oppressed and depressed. And I'm not on here speaking racist. I'm not at all. I'm just telling the, the truth. You have your own God. You have your own traditions. You have your own culture. You have your own food. You have your own everything. There is nothing wrong with tapping into that so-called black man, black woman. And, and there's, and why do you feel bad for trying to tap into that? They have you feeling bad for trying to find your true identity. You start feeling bad and think it's witchcraft to tap into your God. Uh, cause, cause now you're not serving Jesus. Huh? Which is really Caesar Bourgeois, a gay Caucasian man. Let's keep it real. They had sex with his brother. So, so, so like we have to, we have to start, we have to start sitting back here and really looking like, hold on. They push religion on us. They push their education on us. They push their diets and their food on us. They push their God on us. Um, they pushing all the, and it's, it's not benefiting us whatsoever. Because if you look at who we was before slavery till now, we digress. We done backtracked. 
We done backtracked, y'all. So we ain't doing better. Obviously, we getting worse. So we know what the issue and the problem is. So why not come together and create a culture? Create a community, create a dietary program, create a mineral program, recreate the food pyramids, recreate the blood CBC charts, the complete blood charts, recreate what STD is, Re redefine what disease actually is, heal this illusion we call disease. If we are different people and if we come from different ancestral lines, if we come from different geographical locations, then that means our food need to be different and the way we treat our bodies need to be different and the way we treat so-called dis-ease need to be different. And guess what? I done done 99% of it already. I already created a dietary chart. I already recreated the blood chart. I recreated the kidney chart. I already did half of it. All I'm saying is that now we just need to build us our own hospitals. Like it's time for that, y'all. I'm just saying. And look. Again, this is not against nobody, but this is about us. So this is not no hatred to anybody that's outside of my species, but this is about my people, though. Everybody got a hero. Everybody got a hero, but us. Everybody got answers to who they are, but us. Everybody know their culture and their identity, but us. So don't y'all think it's time to be huddling up and like, hold on, y'all. What what are we finna do? Huh? Y'all keep them prove that we different. What are we finna do? Y'all keep them did a, a brilliant, brilliant presentation, show, presentation showing the different biochemical molecular structure and how they're using their medicines and how it is taken. What are we finna do? He's proven that the carnivore diet putrefies. Changes the pleomorphic bacteria with inside of the cells. And this is what really causes disease because the cells is there deprived of oxygen. And the deprived of oxygen causes actually constipation of the cells. And the cell starts to uh, basically starts to go through uncontrollable cellular mitosis. And this is where cancer comes from. What are we going to do? Like it's time to quit doing all this and quit doing all of this and start doing this. Start putting your hands to the plow. And the worst thing you can do is listen to anybody, including myself, and not research what they said and come to a conclusion. That's, that means you don't have your mind. You are operating in somebody else's mind. The so-called Negro, the indigenous aboriginal of America is out of his mind and is in somebody else's mind. Operating from somebody else's culture, putting somebody else's culture on their plate. And that is the reason why we are sick. And I don't know how, how much I got to say this and how loud I got to yell it. You are different, family. Research what I'm saying. Look, prove me wrong. Try to prove me wrong. And, and maybe this is what's going to actually wake you up. You are a frugivore. You're not an omnivore. You're not an herbivore. You're a damn show, not a carnivore, family. Just saying. I am just saying. But yeah, that's crazy, man, just seeing that. And I'm like, dang. And then I got this one lady. She just went strictly all facts. Strictly all facts. I'm like, dang, you was doing good. We got your numbers down. Your viral load went down. You done heard one video. And then I look at the channel and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's not convincing any. The dude ain't even convincing. She didn't change her whole diet up. And she been going three months strong, doing good. Viral load going down and everything. And I bet you, I'll give it three three months. I'll give it three months. The blowback is going to be hell. And she's going to be coming back to me to come fix it up. How can we change the WIC program in foods? We have to create our, uh, our own programs. That's a good question, though, uh, Ms. Brown. Excellent. We just have to create our own program. Y'all realize the WIC and all of them, these programs actually came from the Black Panthers. The Black Panthers, who is who really, who, uh, Huey P. Newton and them, they the one who created these different programs for the so-called black community. And then the government adapted them, I mean, adopted them and started using it. But the original WIC and stuff, the original programs, the food programs actually came from the Black Panthers. So this is not nothing new. We've been helping our people. We just using other people's knowledge to help our people. So it's really hurting our people. 
people and not helping them. There is nothing healthy about giving a black person or a so-called Negro milk. When, when we know that genetically all so-called African-Americans, so-called, so-called African-American people are lactose intolerant, meaning we're not supposed to have any type of lactic acid from another animal in our body. But we didn't know that at first. So they created these programs and it was dry. It was called the breakfast Pro program. And you can actually come to one of the Black Panthers uh, 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 headquarters and they feed them every morning and they went home with food. But the food was shit. And the reason why the food was bullshit is because who taught them the food? So, so we have to, that's why I say healing starts in the mind because the informa information is vital. Information is a, is a freaking weapon, y'all. So if you teach the people the wrong information and we will think that we in the right mindset trying to help the people. So we giving our people the wrong information and instead of misguiding them down the path of enlightenment or down the path of this evolutionary uh, 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 consciousness expansive process. And that's how you keep a people enslaved. All you have to do is funnel the wrong information. And that's what's going on with our people right now. There is so much wrong information out there. You got TikTok full of wrong information. Facebook full of wrong information. YouTube full of wrong information. The radio stations full of wrong information. Television full of wrong information. It's so much information out there. And this is the true tree of knowledge of good and evil. This is that tree that was talking about in the kosh that it was talking about in Adam and Kawhi, what they call Adam and Eve in the Bible. That tree of knowledge, good and evil is this information just the same as this, this Apple phone. Well, I got one of these EM, uh, EMF protectors on her, but notice the apple and how it's bit off into. And then it talks about the apple deception in the Bible where it really don't mention apple, but notice how this apple have a whole chunk bit out of it. This is the deception right here. This is the deception. We are in the garden of Eden right now, constantly eating from this tree of knowledge, good and evil. And instead of taking the good out of it by researching and applying it and using spiritual discernment, we take the evil part because we believe everything we fucking read and see. And that's the reason why we still in a position of lower conscious state that we in straight up. And I'm just keeping it real with y'all, keeping it straight up real with y'all. So the whole thing is, is to do, we have to do this family. Everybody want to know how we do this. We have to start controlling our own information. That's what we have to do. We have to, look, let me say that again, because this is a big, this is a big epiphany right here. The first thing we have to do as indigenous people all around the world, I'm just, I'm talking about the aboriginals everywhere. I'm talking about pan aboriginals everywhere. Pan indigenous people everywhere because we have to create a global networking entity where we can share communication with each other and information globally because it's not on, we're not it's just not us indigenous people to America. There's indigenous people of Africa, indigenous people of Australia, indigenous people of Asia. All of them look just like your black ass. But they can't get the information and we can't get the information because there's people that's influencing us through television programming, radio programming and all in social media. So we have to first create a team and this team need to be a networking team that does nothing but research and funnel information. Once the information get at its purest form, it need to go through. We need to find a couple global heads of each of each different continent. And then it goes through them. And then we create a web and we create our own database where we can put our information on one database, one database. And, it, and the only thing this stuff has to do is with the progression of us, with the health of us, the decline of health of us. Certain foods that we can eat and that we can't eat. Certain waters we can drink and that we can't drink. What do 5G do to indigenous cells? What do poison do to indigenous cells? What do EMF frequencies do to indigenous cells? What, where's where's medicine-less medicine hospitals at for indigenous people? We need to create a network. But in order to do that, we got to control our information. We don't control information. And since we don't control information, anybody can just push information on to us. And since we such a spiritual, rhythmatic, melanin people, if it sounds good, we automatically listen to it. How many people thought corn was good? Because it sounded good. How many people thought carrots was actually good for you when it's actually bad for the eyes, but they teach that carrots is good for the eyes because it sounded good and it came with a white coat, huh? Septoscope, huh? MD on, on a tag. I'm going to eat my carrots. 
How many people think that beans was actually good for you? But it really destroys the it destroys the kidneys. And there's so much phytic acid that it inhibits all of the minerals, including your number one mineral that you need for every process in life, black man, black woman, which is iron phosphate. Phytase actually inhibits iron phosphate. How many people is taught that helicobacter is bad, H. pylori? And they got you thinking that your whole size is messed up and you got stomach ulcers because you have H. pylori, this pleomorphic bacteria inside of you. But this actual pleomorphic... Uh, 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 procreotic bacteria is really good for your body. And you can't even break down half of the processes in your body without helicobacter. Who telling you that? Oh, because it's bad for them. It's bad for their body. It gives them GERS disease. It gives them leaky gut. It don't give you that. Do y'all see what I'm saying though? There's a difference. And if there's a difference... That means the information have to be different. And if the information have to be different, that means the food have to be different. And if the food have to be different, that means the essential nutrients like water have to be different. And if the water have to be different, that means my body is different. And if my body is different, that means my clothes have to be different. You can't wear mixed fabric because you vibrate at a certain hertz and frequency. You vibrate damn near to the to the 440 uh, frequency and between 425 uh, 4, 428 frequency like the bumblebee. You are you are very high, a, a very high resonant vibratory beam. So you can't wear the clothes they wear. You ain't even supposed to have clothes on to be honest with you because your skin have to eat the sun. But since we are in a society that teaches pervertness and that nakedness is actually some type of pervertness, then you got to put clothes on. But if you look at true indigenous history, only thing we covered up was our, our Johnson. That's it. And the women covered up her vagina. Everything else was out. Titties was out. Pecs was out. Everything was out because we knew the, the, the fundamental construct of skin eats the sun. Skin eat the sun, convert cholesterol, ADA, HDL, HDL cholesterol to vitamin D. The vitamin D3 in the cholesterol creates my sexual hormones. It actually regulates my pituitary gland, my thymus gland. Oh, we talking about other people that thymus glands actually shrinks to a size of a fingernail. But yours grow. Even our pineal size is different. So you produce more melatonin different. Even our sleep patterns is different. A lot of them beta sleep. We delta sleep. So, so this is what I'm saying. I didn't study this thing through and through and through and through. It's time for us to wake up, family. That's all I'm saying. And I'm not, and again, I got to keep saying this because the first thing everybody want to do is tag my videos as hate speech. And this is what get all of my videos taken down. This is not hate speech. I love anybody that love my people. We heal thousands of Caucasians. They call us all the time. They was just packed in my seminar. I hugged on them, gave them high fives, took pictures and everything. So it's not about hatred. It's not about racism. It's not about none of that. It's about the facts. And the fact of the matter is you are biochemically different. So you have to eat a biochemically different dense food. You are more bone mineral dense than everybody else on planet Earth. So since you have more mineral dense bones, then that means you need more minerals to replace the bones. Don't that make sense? You have more cells. You have 150 trillion cells. They have 50 trillion cells. You have more prokaryotic cells than eukaryotic cells. They have more eukaryotic cells than prokaryotic cells. So you come from prokaryotes, they come from eukaryotes. It's a difference. You need sugar. They can eat fats all they want. They can eat meat all they want. But guess what you need? You need sugar because you are a frugivore by nature. Just saying. And look, the beautiful thing about this, I'm challenging you. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong, family. Everything I just said, look it up. Go to the library. Research. Use Google. Use scholar articles. Use whatever you need to use. Prove me wrong. And you're going to see. You're going to be like, dang, y'all key straight on to something. And this is going to bring and open your eyes into a new world. 
You're going to look at everything differently. Disease is not going to be the same no more. You ain't going to be able to even call it disease. I hate saying the word disease because because it, it you could be like, damn, it really don't exist. My body is trying to heal us. I have a miraculous. It's trying to heal itself. They call it my disease. These symptoms disease, but these symptoms is actually my body trying to get rid of cytotoxic. Oh, my God. This is different. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. That's all I'm saying, family. If y'all get what I'm saying so far, type in some nines. I was dissing sugar when this live first popped up. I bet you did. But guess what? You dissing sugar while you eating sugar. <laughs> while your body breaking down whatever, it's going to break it down into sugar. We got catabolic and anabolic. This is, it's called lipolysis. This is actually what breaks your fatties down to a fatty acid transport. Then a fatty acid transport breaks itself down into a beta oxygen. I mean, oxidative stress. Beta oxidation is actually what changes your fats into ketones. Guess what these ketones need to yield energy by ATP? Carbon. Guess what this carbon is called? The citric acid crib cycle. Guess what this citric acid crib cycle need inside of the mitochondria matrix? Sugar. <laughs> it's the funniest shit ever. Sugar. Huh? Protein goes through what? <laughs> what protein go through? Glucose. Neogenesis. Glucose. Uh-oh, sugar. Neogenesis. So proteins even break down to sugar. What do your actual fruit, berries, and melons and vegetables go through? Glycolysis. Glycolysis does what? Breaks down into what? Sugar. Uh, even if you go eat a hamburger right now, guess what the hamburger is going to break down to? Even as, even though it's not going to be that much of it, that shit going to break down into glucose, sugar. Go eat your hot dog. Go eat your meat. Go eat your fish. Go eat whatever you want to eat in this world. It's going to have to be broken down into carbon. And this carbon is what again, family? Sugar. Not only is carbon sugar, but carbon is what? Melanin. The darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. The darker the flesh, the deeper the roots. You are made of sugar. That's why your sugar is so high in your blood. But they call it hyperglycemia. huh? They call it diabetes mellitus. Or is it that you just have more sugar content in your body than any other species on planet Earth? And that's the reason why so-called black people... Or the number one when it comes to diabetes. It, or is it just that's your molecular structure and content? What about high blood pressure? And we start talking about cortisol. Huh? We start talking about salience. We start talking about all these things that is naturally high inside of your body. And then you see that we are the number one for high blood pressure, hypertension, cardiac arrest, and stroke. Is it your melanin content? And is we looking at this shit wrong? That's all I'm saying. It's time to start questioning. Are we looking at this wrong? Have what we've been taught is boy, have is we looking at it wrong? <laughs> I'm just saying. Then we're talking about creatine. Creatinine and creatine and how you have more creatine and creatinine in your body than anybody else where they had to them. They had to change the blood work and put African-American GFR. Non-African-American GFR on your blood work. It clearly separates you from everybody else. Why is that? All because glutathione kicks on quicker in your body. Creatinine comes to creatinine quicker in your body for you to expel the toxins in your body. And that's the reason why your lymphatic system gets backed up quicker than anybody else to have an interstitial fluid of the body. Because not only is you a high sugar content person, but you are a high lipid content person. I didn't say that. The government did. <laughs> hmm? Why are your irises melanated, brown? Theirs is green, blue, gray. Is it that you have a higher melanin content in your eyes? What do this melanin content does? Do, them, do it let you see different spectrums and color of light? Yes, it does. Scientifically, on a scientific, on a scientific level, if you and we I will pull the papers if y'all think I'm lying. 
every other race is is scientifically colorblind, but you not. You see red different than any other race. What about the melanin receptors on this hair like villa on your tongue? Why do you think most of other people's food is bland and yours is full of salt? It's full of seasoning because you have melanin receptors on the villa like tongue hair like structures on your tongue. So their piece of chicken, which I don't recommend nobody eating chicken. But their piece of chicken will always taste different than your piece of chicken. You can always add a little extra uh uh on there because your taste buds is different. You want to talk about hearing? Y'all just seen a video I just dropped talking about the hairs in the air called hair bundles that make the auditorial tools vibrate as a resonant frequencies. Guess what? Different than theirs. Even your peripheral vision is different. I got all articles on this on how you can feel and see things before it even coming through your sight and they can't. You can feel and see things before it even enter your peripheral vision and they can't. Just saying. What about running? What about jumping? It's even a movie they made called White Boy Can't Jump. What about dancing? Melanin, this rhythmatic. What about singing, rapping? All the extraordinary shit that you do, that you take for granted every day, that they will kill for. Millions and millions of so-called African-Americans go missing a year. They find them with their skin and their whole vessel is missing their organs. And then the organs that these people are taking are high in melanin content. You better recognize and realize who you is. You are precious, man. You are peculiar. You are special. Everything that you need is already within you. You are the gods and the earths of this particular realm. You are amazing species. All I'm saying is start eating like it. Start acting like it. That's it. That's it. Please tell me what I can do to remineralize your tooth. I have something on my site called the Tooth and Gum Restoration. The site is down right now and it'll be back up on the 21st. But if you write these herbs down, use white oak bark. Say it again, white oak bark powder. Neem powder, all organic though. White oak bark powder, neem powder. Clove powder, fresh clove powder. Make sure it's fresh clove powder. Sodium bicarbonate or what we're going to call baking soda without aluminum in it. Sodium bicarbonate, which is what we're going to call baking soda powder without aluminum in it. And last but not least, myrrh gum resin powder. Myrrh gum resin powder. Do all equal parts. Mix these things up and that will restore your entire mouth. That was one of my first toothpaste powders. Well, one of my first tooth powders. It healed my entire mouth, y'all. That's what you need. That's what you need. How do grains... How do gain, How do I gain weight as an athlete on just fruits and veggies? Again, you can go right now and eat you a gain... Eat you, eat you some teff right now. It'll gain visceral fats. It will create adipose tissues in you. And, and teff is a fruit. So what I'm saying, we have to we have to change the way we, we think about fruits and vegetables. There's thousands and thousands of fruits that will put weight on you. Thousands and thousands. For instance, grains that I say that you can't eat, like teff, it's a good one. Another grain, which is quinoa, which is good for that will put meat on you. That'll put meat on you. Garbanzo beans, these things will put meat on you. They, they, will, they will put flesh on you. They will make your mass get bigger. Avocados will make your mass get bigger. The flesh of coconuts will make your mass get bigger. All you have to do is go on a plant-based, a whole plant-based keto diet. Not this keto diet they talking about. I'm talking about a high-fat keto diet in, in, in plant-based plant and plants. And you will see that you can accumulate weight. Look at look, I accum look at my weight, man. And I got a good diet. Well, I didn't lost. I actually even lost a lot of it. Shirt looking super big. But that's because I'm slimming down. I don't think y'all know how many grains I was eating filming this grain thing. 
I ate grains every day to prove a point. Me and Jay did. We got blood work and everything. Showing how my blood work changed on his spelt. I ate spelt literally every day. I ain't see me gain. I bet a lot of people didn't know I was gaining so much weight. We was eating spelt and all types of grains every day while we was filming. It got to the point I couldn't even fit in none of my garments. I was getting my blood checked every week. Not only did we have three other participants helping with our clinical trials, but me and my cameraman got on this stuff ourselves. We ain't even tell nobody about it. I'm literally just now saying this. And I got all my blood work showing how my blood changed, my fat, my mass changed, my adipocytes got bigger. Um, I started getting big. I'm still trying to get rid of the love handles from that. Showing you, and this, this was just a six-month run. I gained tons of weight. Six months, I gained so much weight, all by adding grains to my dinner. I didn't even add it to my breakfast. I just added it to my dinner just to show y'all how these grains is bad for our bodies. Uh, beans need to be sprouted. Some beans need to be sprouted. Most uh, scoop, scoop man love, scooper man lover. Some beans need to be sprouted because some beans I just don't recommend you eating, period. Like black beans, even if you sprouted them, I still wouldn't re recommend you eating them. You know, uh... Your, your sprouted chickpeas is good or chickpeas not sprouted. Just make sure you soak them to get that foam haul off of them because that foam haul on them have all types of phytic acid in them. So soak them to get the phytics out of it. Healing depression, alternative to antibiotics. Depression is always dealing with the thyroid. The thyroid, 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 thyroid. So whenever you're dealing with depression, you're dealing with the thyroid. Usually it's hyperthyroidism, meaning you're missing aldine. So you need to go to the sea. Go to the sea and find you some aldine. Uh, you can get you some sea moss, some club moss, some kelp, some dose. All these things are high in aldine. Or get you some nori sheets. You know, I eat about three packs of them a day. Them are very, very good uh, for thyroglobulin. And it's good for aldine to be changed to aldide. And you can use that aldide to actually bring up your thyroid and your pituitary axis. The pituitary, when the glandular system or what they call the endocrine system or what I'm going to call the chakras, when these go down and they lessen their hertz and frequencies, that's when you start seeing you interacting with the environment different. All depression is, and I'm going to tell you what depression is. We, we even make depression complicated and most of your depression is mineral deficiency. And one of those minerals is aldine, like I just said, or thyroglobin, or which come from the amino acid tyrosine. You need these things, or, or and thyronine, you need these things to actually keep the, the molecular structure uh, in balance, right? Now, all depression is, is having the spiritual intuitiveness to know your purpose and willfully going against it. Let me say that again, because we have to start speaking on a spiritual level too, because again, we, we're changing the, the curriculum and we are spiritual people. So in order for me to truly reach out, we have to start speaking on a physical level and a spiritual level. All depression is, is you to have the spiritual intuitiveness to know your purpose in life and to willfully go against that shit. That will throw your ass into depression like no other. Knowing to do right and then doing wrong. That's depression. And what the depression is, is to have the excuse for keep doing wrong. That's what depression is because it's a fight against the actual right brain. You know what I'm saying? That frontal lobe and the reptilian brain. It's a fight going on with inside of you. These are your personalities. The left hemisphere banging with the right hemisphere. The right hemisphere is your spiritual side. That is your feminine side. That is your emotional side. That is your creativity side. That's your purpose driven side. The left side is the logical side. That's your math side. That's your survival side. They fight against each other all day. The right side wants you to do good. The left side like, no nigga, be logical. Fight or flight, sex, reproduction. Go back to the old ways, comfortability. You see what I'm saying? So, so when the right brain is, or that God-like structure of being in you is telling you what to do and how to be purpose-driven, and then your left brain goes against it because you want to be laxy daisy to things that you used to doing, and you don't want to break the program and break the generational curses, the moment that you make the actual decision to go with the left brain, when the right brain gave you the gut feeling on what you need to do, that is what's called depression. It's a battle within. Some people call it the right angel and the left angel, the good angel and the bad angel, the angel on the right side, the devil. It's all talking about the left and the right hemisphere of your brain coexisting as once and co coexisting as one to actually project your consciousness outside of your body. That's it.
What can I do for kidney failure? Uh, what's failing your kidneys? Usually what's failing your kidneys is acidosis, metabolic acidosis at that. So you got to cleanse the kidneys up. You have to ask yourself what is connected to the kidneys that open up the kidney nephrons and filtrate the kidneys. We're talking about the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands is the size of walnuts. They shape like pyramids and they sit right on top of the uh, the kidneys. The adrenal glands is what you would call the enteric or the intrinsic nervous system. This is the, par uh, the peripheral nervous system, the parasympathetic and the simple nervous uh, the sympathetic nervous system. So we need to cut the actual adrenals on. You're adrenal fatigued. Anybody that's dealing with kidney failure is actually dealing with metabolic acidosis of the kidneys and adrenal fatigue or adrenal failure. So the problem is not the kidneys. The problem is the adrenals because the adrenals act as the electronics to kick the kidneys on for the kidneys can start filtrating for so you can get all that metabolic acidosis waste outside of the body. So in order to kick the kidneys on, we have to we have to give you herbs that's going to clean up the kidneys. Now, mind you, you have to do this on an all fruit diet. You have to do this on an all fruit diet because you need the high H3O2 constituents or the sugars to actually break up the solidification and the calcification of the body. For you can start breaking up the meridian pathway blockages. For you can start flowing energy again. Not only that, you have to break up the interstitial fluid or what we call the lymphatic vessels or this fluid that that's supposed to go through the lymphatic vessels. You have to remember that the blood is what feeds the cells of the body. The lymphatic system is what cleanses the cells of the body. The nerves commands and speaks and communicates with the cells of the body. So if the lymphatic system is the sewage system of the body and it's supposed to cleanse the body, that means these lymphatic vessels is going to go to the kidneys for you can you can literally urinate all of that metabolic waste out. You have two ways to cleanse yourself, really three. The first way is your skin. The skin is the third kidney or what you call the third organ. If the kidneys is not filtrating properly, the skin is going to filtrate for the kidneys. The second way is the way is the kidneys by way of the lymphatic system. So the lymphatic system needs to be open up up at all times. The third one is your digestive system. This So the digestive system gets rid of macro waste. The urinary tracts gets rid of micro waste. The skin gets rid of micro waste. Your issue in the kidneys is not macro waste, so it's not the food. It's the, what your food is breaking down to. And then the body is utilizing the food for certain minerals and certain nutrients, but you have a blowback because it's probably acidic forming. These acids is then going to the kidneys and sitting on the kidneys and burning the nephrons of the kidneys up. So so you need to neutralize the acids because if you don't neutralize the acids, calcium is going to be released from the bones. Not only calcium, but magnesium because it acts as a neutralizing buffering system. So you have mucus, you have acids, you have calcium and magnesium just sitting in one place for, uh, for a long time. This is called what? Solidification and calcification. Where well, you think you get kidney stones from? Gallbladder stones, liver stones from? It's solidification and calcification of the system. So how do you break up solidification and calcification? Well, water. But the water we need is H3O2. Like I tell y'all all the time, if you get a stain on the floor, what you gonna use to get it up? Some type of water soluble uh, uh, ingredients. And you're going to mix it with a chemical agent that's alkaline. That's why you use bleach to wash your dishes. Even though it's bad for you, you intuitively know that bleach is what? Alkaline. Or you use Comet mixed with water. Because you intuitively know that the Comet is alkaline because the water is slightly acidic. It is H2O. Uh oh, H2O. What do that mean? Two hydrogens and one oxygen. So even when you look at water or tap water on its level, chemical level, water is automatically slightly acidic. So naturally, we always add something or what you would call an alkaloid or alkaline agent to it to turn it alkaline to clean up the buffering system or to clean the shit that's on the floor. That's why you mix your bleach in your mop water or you put comet in your mop water or you put lemons in your mop water. It's trying to make that, that acidity of the water out. Alkaline. Same thing you have to do with your body. That's the reason why I don't push H2O, but I push H3O2. Now we have two oxygen atoms connected to the three hydrogens, and this makes it more of a buffering system because it's alkaline. So go on an all juice diet. Now, if you're going through kidney failure, that means that you have a percentage of your kidneys. I need to know if you're urinating. A lot of people that's going through kidney failure go on dialysis and they can't urinate no more. That's going to be an issue because I'm going to have to fill your body up with H3O2 to open up the kidneys to break through to get all the metabolic waste out of your body. But if you're not urinating, that means you're going to accumulate all the water that I'm giving you. Now you're going to be strictly a demon. Edemic. Now this edemia is going to go to the heart. Now you're going to start building fluid on the heart. And that's why most of kidney failure leads to heart disease or heart failure. So, so this is what I'm talking about. This is holistic. And I'm talking about this for so-called 
Negroes, but if any other race follow this information, they can heal themselves because I'm giving you the highest alternative way of healing, period. Because we're speaking about a highest, the highest species on planet Earth, which is melanated beans. Goes back to what I'm saying. Anybody can adapt to our diet, but we can't adapt to nobody's diet. So, but uh, as far as for I would say my kidney and adrenal kit, if the kidney adrenal kit uh is not too much for you, I need to know your kidney uh our, your kidney uh capacity though. But usually we say the kidney adrenal kit off the website, or we'll say the geogenetic level two, depending on the actual functionality of the kidneys. Is you urinating or not? Uh when you drink in water, if you drink 16 ounces, do you swell up like a balloon? All these things go into the factor when we talk about kidney disease. But just for the sake of my people, the herbs for the kidneys is juniper berry, uh parsley leaf. Let me say it slow. Juniper berry, write that down. Parsley leaf, it's a good one. You have to break up all the solidification and calcification. So you have to go with the hydrangea root, family. Have to go with the hydrangea root. You have to realize that there's, there's at least three pints of blood in your kidneys at all times. So you got to cleanse the blood. So kick in some red, uh, red leaf clovers. Matter of fact, don't even do red leaf clovers. Let's go straight for the bud. Red clover flower buds. Way stronger than the leaf. Add some burdock root in there. Burdock powder, of course. And these things is good for the kidneys, but you cannot address the kidneys without addressing the adrenal, the adrenal glands. So if you want to address the adrenal glands, the first, you probably got high blood pressure because you got kidney failure. But if you don't have high blood pressure, which is unlikely, you are going to use licorice root. If you do have high blood pressure or hypertension, then you need to go past the licorice root and you need to use ashwagandha root. Now, on top of the ashwagandha root, if I was you, I would mix this with wild, uh, with wild yam root. This is very, very good to kick on the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands kick on something called acetyl-CoA and acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is actually what is constricts and dilates and open up the lymphatic vessels to actually go through something like the digestive system do, which is peristalsis, to give the actual lymphatic vessels a movement. Because the lymphatic vessels don't move on their own. They move through that enzyme that I just talked about, and it moves through you moving your body, like working out. Uh, rebounding, jumping on a trampoline, jump roping, skin brushing, uh, deep tissue massages, deep lymphatic massages, deep neural lymphatic massages. These are the things that actually move the lymphatic system. But you do have something called acetylcholine A and acetylcholine or acetylcholine nesterase, which is these enzymic reactions that take the lymphatic vessels through the peristalsis to help move all of that lymph out. The lymph is the trash can of the body. It picks up all and it engulfs like the the uh, the phagoto the, the phagocytes phagocytes uh, certain certain invaders inside the body. Then you have the macrophages that gobbles up certain bacteria and gob gobbles up uh, certain acids in the body. These things then take it to the lymph nodes. The lymph nodes break these things down for they can go into the lymphatic vessels. The lymphatic vessels then go through its peristalsis per se and it ends up in the kidneys and then the adrenal glands kick on the kidneys to turn the nephrons on. The nephrons then filter the blood back into the bloodstream. It filters water back into the system and it kicks all of the bullshit that ain't supposed to be in the body outside of the body by way of urine. And you can see that when you wake up in the morning, before you drink or before you eat anything, just urinate in a glass jar, leave that glass jar sitting out for like 12 hours, come back, and you will see the actual settlement of the metabolic waste, of dead cells, of toxemia, of cytotoxins. All these things will be at the bottom of the glass, and that's how you know if your kidneys and your adrenals are filtrating properly, or if your interstitial fluid of your body or what they call the lymphatic system is backed up and you need to break up that old coagulated lymph. The whole thing is to move lymph. If you can move lymph, you can heal diseases. You just have to move lymph. But you can't move lymph if the kidney's not working because then you're going to kill yourself. And that's what a lot of these herbalists are doing now because I'm teaching so much on the lymphatic system. They moving the lymphatic system. They ain't master them kidneys and them adrenals. What's good? Can you help for gout? What is gout, family? Let me show y'all what gout is. Let me show y'all what gout is. This is gout. What creates gout, family? Gout is uric acid buildup. Somebody type that in there. Gout is uric acid buildup. Now you got to ask yourself, what turns into uric acid? Huh? What turns into uric acid? Most of your meats... 99.9% .9 of your meats break down into uric acid. Just like all of your grains and your sugars break down into carbonic acid. All of your dairy products break down into what? 
lactic acid. So you need to get off of all proteins. Any complex protein is going to break down into uric acid. Uric acid strips calcium from the bone. Now remember what I said, when uric acid starts stripping calcium from the bone matrix, what calcium is going to have to come and neutralize. When calcium come neutralize uric acid, mucus come. So when you mix mucus with calcium and acid, it solidifies. And this is where you get gout from. You see that? Now, I'm going to show you something that will give you quick relief. Castor oil packs. Get you some castor oil packs, warm them up, and put them on your gout area. It will actually break up the solidification of calcification of uric acid on the body. Now, remember, to break these things up, you need hydration. So you have to hydrate the body. The best hydration is H3O2. Your fruit juices. What I would do if I'm dealing with uric acid, I would, kill, I would clean that up with what, what you would call astringent citric acids. I'm going to be on lemons. Lemons will pull the hell out of that area. Lemon juice. Key lime juice will pull the hell out of that area. Regular globe limes, yes, with seeds will pull the hell out of that area. Grapefruits with seeds will pull the hell. So get on a citric juice fast. Go on a salad food vacation. Put you some castor oil on there. Rub it in the area for it can break up the solidification and the calcification. Not only that, hydrangea root that I just told y'all about, quassia bark. These things break up solidification and calcification of the body, the cells, and the bones. So you need to go after what you would call lymphatic herbs or cancer herbs. These are herbs that moves the lymphatic system. Prickly ash bark moves the lymphatic system. Cleaver's leaf moves the lymphatic system. Poke root moves the lymphatic system. Blood root moves the lymphatic system. Purple violet leaf moves the lymphatic system. Per de arco moves the lymphatic system. All these things that I just said that moves the lymphatic system actually break, the, break up solidification and calcification of the body. Use all equal parts. You're going to take this as a tea, but it's not going to be a hot tea. It's going to be a cold tea. Put it in water. Leave it sitting in that water for six hours. Come back and stir it again. Let it sit for another six hours and then drink it down in an eight ounce glass. You'll get rid of your gout. Do not heat it up, though. Use this as a cold tea because cold and he so heat and cold brings out different healing constituents of your herbs. Like, for instance, wormwood. The worst thing you can do with some wormwood is, is put it under hot temperatures. Wormwood actually work better when you put it in cold water or room temperature water. Did you know that? Look it up. You see that? If y'all got that so far, type in some nines. What dissolves fibroids? You got to ask yourself, what is a fibroid? A fibroid is something called a corpus luteum. Every single month, when a woman go through her ovulation period, she's supposed to get ejaculated in. If she get ejaculated in, usually the sperm makes it to the, the ovarium and a, a baby is seated. That germ is now seated and a, and a baby come forth from it. This happened through her ovulation period where she produces something called a cyst. You naturally produce a cyst on your ovary every ovulation period. This happens once a month. What happens is this cordialupia cyst starts to grow and get bigger and it goes through something called cellular mitosis when you are producing too much estrogen in the body by way of the pituitary gland and by way of what y'all, the ovaries and the thyroid gland. So if you're eating estrogenic foods, if you're drinking out of plastic bottles, if you're leaving your plastic bottle waters in the car while it's hot outside, if you're eating soy, if you if you having too much lav even lavender perfumes and stuff, all of these different perfumes and stuff that you rubbing in your skin actually are estrocytic. They meaning they will bring a lot of estrogen into the body. Y'all didn't know, but estrogen is acidic as hell. Testosterone is acidic as hell. Hell, pregnimalone is acidic as hell. The only for real, if we're going to talk about a hormone that's in the body that's alkaline, it would be progesterone. Now, when progesterone levels go low because estrogen is hijacking progesterone and going higher, going uh, going high, going through its cation and anion environment, stealing all the electrons from from uh, progesterone. What happens is progesterone is what you would uh not progesterone, but uh estrogen is what you would call a cellular proliferator, meaning.
estrogen. Estrogen is what grows a woman's hips. It grows a woman's breasts. Uh, breast. It gives her her curves. All that. It get her ready for, for prolactin. For her breast can produce milk. It opens up her hips for she's able to have sex to conceive and push a baby through. So if you look at estrogen, estrogen is a cellular proliferator. It grows shit. And it works aside of something called L-arginine, which is another cellular proliferator that grows things. So you have estrogen and you have high arginine foods. If you're eating food that have high arginine, L-arginine, uh, and uh, estrogen in it, then it's going to keep growing that corpus luteum. So when the corpus luteum starts to grow, the body's going to try to break it down. When the body starts to break it down, it breaks off and then it turns into two corpus luteum cysts. Then it turns into three. These things get bigger and then it forms together and it starts going through something called angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is when fibroids start hijacking the blood. The shit literally grows new blood vessels and now it's having a blood supply. So now you have a tumor, big as hell, starting to grow teeth and shit. It grow teeth, eyes, and all of that. Because remember, it was supposed to be a baby. So it'll grow teeth, eyes, and have hair in weird places, and it got its own angiogenesis blood supply. Boom. That's a fibroid, or that's a tumor, or that's a cyst. Guess how you break it down? Stop feeding it. But now we got a different problem because it stole the blood supply. So now we got to stop the blood circulation to that area. And how you do that is you cut yourself off from all estrogen. So Google estrogen uh, foods like beans and stuff. It's so it's so, it's so much. They put estrogen in everything because they're trying to feminize, feminize the black boys out here. So it's estrogen and damn near everything. Now, stay away from the soy. Stay away from the bottled waters and all of that. And what you need is the geogenetic therapeutic package, uh, level three from off the site. Uh, if they too big, you might have to get them surgically removed though. I'm not one of them people. You know, one thing I do believe in the allopathic community, I think that they're good at surgeries, but I think we need to create our own surgeons as well. We need our own surgeons, our own hospitals. But until then, one thing that they are good, they're good at cutting shit off and opening up and, and taking stuff. That's what they're good at. Sometimes they take a little bit more than what they're supposed to be taking. Uh, have y'all read the article about all the black people that go get surgery and they come back with missing organs and missing parts? Have y'all, man, look that up. Look that up. Go in there for surgery. You think you getting one, you think you get a gallbladder removed. They removing all types of other stuff. Ooh, we. Ooh, we. So that's what you need. Geogenetic, all fruit diet. And uh, you need to quit eating anything that's high in estrogen. And please get off the plastic bottled water. And if you do drink uh, bottled water, make sure it's BPA free. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Just go to my website, www.yakiawaken.com. The website will be back up and running on the 21st. Right now, and it is down, but it's still functional. Many you can go to it, and it will give you a message. The message is going to say that we're going through a website uh, update, uh, and this is how you can still order. It's going to give you an email, orders at yakiawaken.com, or you can call the actual warehouse. It's going to give you the warehouse phone number. Reach out to us, uh, Brother Bernard, to send you an invoice, pay for the invoice, and you will get your herbs within a couple of weeks. So it still works the same way. So glass bottle water. If you chill, if you still choose to uh, drink water, which I drink probably a bottle of water once a week. Yes, glass water. I like that glass water. It's called Pana. I, t I, I use. I love Pana. Pana is good. P A N A. It's highly uh, alkaline and it comes from a natural spring and it's in glass. Any good herbs or salts to bathe with? Uh. I mean, yeah, you can bathe with all of them for real. Bathe with all of them. But, you know, and be careful on them baths, y'all. We've been taking way too many baths and showers. We've been taking way too many of them. And it's a new study showing how all, how indigenous people are losing all of the good uh, microbiota or the biodiversity uh, of microbiotas or microbiomes on their skin because we, we, are, we have this shower complex where we think we got to shower three times a day and stuff like that. Of course, shower when you feel like you're getting dirty. If you outside all day, come in and shower and stuff like that. But all these three showers a day is bad for the body. Taking baths every day is super bad for the body. And quit doing that with your children too because you're not only dehydrating them and drying out their skin and you're messing up the oil composition in their skin, but you also are getting rid of and you're killing all the good bacteria that is protecting their skin and their hair and their nervous system from the outer environment. So we have to get out of this cleansing complex. This this cl cleansing complex actually came through germ warfare. That's why they have the germ theory, the, 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 the virus theory, all these different theories where they literally want to fight against germs. They want to fight against viruses. They want to fight against bacteria. They want to fight against everything. And, and remember, we're buying into their culture and their tradition. So we're applying this stuff to us. Don't know that we need our bacteria. 
Our bacteria is very diverse and it's diverse for a reason. And that's why in the last episode I did with y'all, I was talking about the diversity of the vagina bacteria, how it was different from the melanated woman and the Caucasian woman, how she had trillions of more bacteria inside of her vagina of different calibers than, than the actual uh, Caucasian woman. And they said that we was, our women is more prone to bacterial vaginosis, but then you got to look and study what bacterial vaginosis is. Is it truly a disease? You see what I'm saying? Or is the bacteria actually overpopulating to get rid of acids from estrogen being produced by the black woman's womb because the food that she's been forced to eat? Oh, we. I'm look. I'm, look, my book, y'all. Mark my words. The book that I'm writing called Healing the Illusion We Call Disease will break not only the internet, but it will break the whole matrix, y'all. I'm telling you. If if I leave anything behind that's going to change the course of of history, her story, your story, my story will be this book. It's one of the most deepest writings ever in existence. And it's going to challenge everything. It's going to challenge everything you've been taught. You either going to look at me like I'm crazy and out my mind, or you're going to be like, this was a brilliant way to view reality. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, family. We thinking about shooting a whole Netflix series just off the book. I'm telling you. Post the picture of the book. It's my book. It ain't done yet. <laughs> ringing of the ears. Usually ringing of the ears is coming from the atrium or artery of the heart or you, you are going through a consciousness upgrade. Uh, so usually when you go through your consciousness upgrade and you start to vibrate and resonate at different frequencies, the first thing is going to go is your auditory hair buds in your ear. And you're going to start hearing a ringing sensation. Uh, or it could be the atrium artery inside of the heart too. And you're going through some type of uh, rhythmic heart palpitations and you need more calcium and more, and more magnesium uh, inside of the and mag manganese inside of the blood. So sometimes it's a mineral deficiency issue. So, Uptake your minerals by going on your dark leafy greens and going on your fruits and calming down on the meats and the dairies. I would say get rid of the meats and the dairies all together or make sure that you're doing deep diaphragmatic breaths, fire breath meditations and start really meditating and see if you can hear it clearer. If you can hear it clearer, then usually you just leveling up in consciousness and you expanding your consciousness. So it could be them two things. Cellulite, cellulite, cellulite is dealing with adipose. Adipocytes. So when you're dealing with adipocytes or adipose tissues, you're dealing with fats. Usually these fats break down, but don't break down all, all the way because it don't go through uh uh lipo uh 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 it don't go through uh 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 lipos. It don't go through uh like li lipocolysis. So usually when it don't go through uh lipolysis, my, my bad I said lipocolysis, I don't know what that is. Usually when it don't go through lipolysis, cellulose is actually created from that. So you got to figure out a way to start burning your fats. And the best way to burn your fats is by stop eating anything that have a front line of sugar in it. So start eating more fats and fasting, intermittent fasting. So if you eat nothing, you literally can go on a avocado diet and lose cellulite. Think I'm playing test me. You can literally go on a, a, uh, go on a, uh, go on a coconut diet and lose cellulite. Because cellulite is nothing but adipose tissues. Now, the thing about adipose tissues is adipose tissues grow because they become a storage for uh they become a storage for your actual uh not only your L arginine, but they become a storage for all of your different types of pregnenolone, not your progesterone and your estrogen. So when the body is producing too much estrogen, what the body will do is the body will start producing a lot of adipocytes and a lot of adipose fatty tissues to actually store the estrogen. So if you get rid of estrogen, you will get rid of cellulite, cellulite too. But not only do you need to get rid of estrogen, you also need to burn these fats. Usually these become hard visceral fats that you can't get rid of with just working out. You're going to have to go into a caloric deficit. So you need to restrict your caloric deficit by 500 calories. That's what I would do if I was you. I would find out your caloric deficit. I would restrict your caloric deficit by 500 calories. I would stop eating anything that actually have uh, estrogen in it. Not only that, I will start to work out them areas. Usually you should do muscle isolations to work out those areas. And you need to do jump roping. Jump roping and shivering. Shivering, do, shivering burns fats too. So you have three different types of fats. You have your white fat. Then you have two types of brown fats. All of these are adipose tissues. The hard fat to break down is your actual white fat. The thermal brown fat will heat up and actually start burning that fat if you kick your body into a form of plant-based ketosis though. And the way to kick your body into a form of plant-based ketosis is still eating your plants, not your carnivore diet, but just eat them. Just don't eat your fruits. 
Because your fruits have fructose that's going to come right out. It's going to come out quickly. And just make sure that your fats is higher than your glucose. So what I would do is a high avocado diet, high coconut diet, high garbanzo bean diet, anything that's high in lipids, and then do a lower percentage of greens. Do that for about four to five days. Go through everything I said. Make sure you hit up a sauna and you start seeing that cellulose met off you because it's nothing but adipose tissues. I hope I said that right, y'all. Well, I said it right. I hope you understood that right. How can I grow bone density for small wrists? Uh, you usually can strengthen the bone with minerals and you can strengthen the bones. So, so the body have a, a crazy way of working, right? So for instance, in order for you to get more mitochondria, you have to burn more sugar. When you burn more sugar, the sugar is going to tell the body that it needs more, more mitochondria to burn more sugar. You see what I'm saying? It's the same thing with growing bone density or burning minerals. Make sure that you're utilizing the body by walking. Make sure you're eating the right things for you can build up the molecular structure. Once the molecular structure is built, every cell in the body goes through something called controlled apoptosis, meaning it goes through a cellular cycle or a cellular death. Even your bones go through that because your bones is made of cells. So in order to bring more bones, you need to bring in more minerals. In order to, for your body to accept the minerals, not only do your kidneys and your adrenals need to be working because the adrenals is actually in control of the metabolic process of minerals, sugars, steroids, lipids. Your adrenal glands is in control of the metabolic or the utilization process of all of that, but you have to burn things. So it's kind of like your body does this. Your body hates storing shit up. That's why it looks ugly when it stores shit up. Notice when it stores up sugar, it turns into glycogen. Glycogen turns into fat. Then it's fat go through its uh, lipolysis thing that breaks back into sugar to be used again. But notice when it's stored up, it looks bad. You get fat, you get flabby, you got visceral fat everywhere. So the body don't like to really store up anything. The body likes to utilize what it has for it can bring and create more genesis of whatever it needs. So if you need more minerals, then that means you have to utilize more minerals. If you need more cells, then that means you have to kill a, or or destroy more cells in a good way, say like control cellular like apoptosis for the body and the DNA, or what you would call the ribosome of the cells can birth more cells. So it's all about the the the, the yielding and the giving to life. You're gonna use something in life, and, and if you don't use if you don't use too much of it, but you use it just right, the creator give you more. But if you are a glutton of it, it will destroy the body. You'll start seeing you'll start seeing calcium build up on the bones like gout, uric acid. That's too much calcium in the body. There's too much uric acid in the body. You see that? You're storing up too much estrogen. It's going to bring up adipose tissues. That's too much fat in the body. It starts damaging the body. So, so too much of anything is bad when you're not utilizing. So even when you look at the body on a, a biochemical molecular structure, it shows you how to utilize what the, the essential things of life uh, uh, properly. We're not, we're not created to have too much of anything. So if you want to build up bone density, utilize minerals. The best way to utilize minerals is eating the right foods, making sure you're getting in 3,000 steps a day. Make sure that you're active. Go form and create your own garden. That'll keep your ass busy. Gardening will exercise the hell out of you, family. Literally exercise the hell, the devil out of you. Gardening is some of the highest spiritual exercises that you can do. Planting seeds and watching life growing and watering and making sure the sun right and making sure the weather right and tending to the flowers. That is high spiritual shit, family. And that will actually help you Get the adequate amount of minerals that you need. So if you want to grow bones, you need more minerals. But in order for your body to get more minerals, you have to utilize the minerals you already got. I hope I said that right. That's crazy when you think about it. It's the, it's the yield and the give to life. The consumption and elimination of life. Everything in life goes through assumption and elimination process. A light and a dark process. A hot and a cold process. A fat and a skinny process. A left and a right process. A beautiful and an ugly process. It's about the, the ma'at, the pendulum, how it swings evenly. Everything is a balance. My dad have a liver transplant. What can I do? What can I feed him? Uh, first, so if he had a liver uh, four, bango five. If he had a liver transplant, that means they have him on a lot of uh, chemotherapy uh uh, immunosuppressing drugs because they're going to have to suppress the so-called immunological system or what I would call the lymphatic defense system for his body won't reject that liver. So uh, I'm going to keep it 100% real with you. He's going to have to go through that process before we even change his diet because the more and more we get him on fruits and the more we get him on herbs, the body's going to start recognizing that that liver ain't supposed to be in him and it's going to try to start kicking it out. So you see they already have to suppress the actual lymphatic system for the lymphatic system 
the defense system won't recognize that it's fake or is recognizing that it's fake, but they put them in handcuffs with the, with the, uh, with the immune suppressants for they can't fight and try to kick it out of the body. But what's going to happen is you put them on a detox right now, it's going to kick all the immune suppressive therapy out of the body and it's going to turn on the lymphatic system. Now you got T cells, B cells, you got lymphocytes, you got phagocytes, you got neutrophils, you got basal fields, you got, you got, the, you got macrophages, everybody in the body like, we got to get this foreign liver up out of here because they looking at the body like these are foreign cells. So I would say let them go through that until the body start accepting the liver. Then we can start doing some things. But even then, even then, there's a chance. There's a there's a good chance once you really start putting him on these fruits and these herbs that the body's going to get smart again and kick it back out. So the, the only thing I can do is this is what I would suggest if it was me. I would get off of the immune suppressive therapy chem chemicals that's mixed with petroleum oil and I would get on immune suppressive herbs. Herbs that are going to suppress the immune system. That's what I would do. Spider veins. When you're dealing with spider veins, you're dealing with a calcium and magnesium deficiency. That is all thyroid and parathyroid. Something is wrong with the calcitonium. The calcitonin is being produced by your parathyroid. So you need to cleanse up your parathyroid. And whenever you're cleansing the glandular highway, an all berry diet. And what you need is my thyroid and parathyroid tincture off my website. Uh, that will get rid of your spider veins. Also, Kawa can make you an actual salve so you can rub on them veins, but you're missing calcium. Calcium, and, and you got to be careful because it can it can turn into thrombosis too where the veins start clogging up and start making big old blood clots and stuff like that but spider veins come from the lack of calcium and magnesium calcium and magnesium are twin sisters or twin brothers whether you're in your feminine or your masculine whatever you want to call them but they work together as a pair anemia you dealing with anemia you lack an iron phosphate Lack of iron phosphate. Be careful with the anemia because that can turn into sickle cell anemia, which can turn into leukemia. These, these are all the same diseases. You need iron phosphate. And I have something called the Blood Builder Iron Nourish Your Kid on the site that'll help with that. Or all geogenetic packages the same? No, all geogenetic packages are not the same. My geogenetic package level one is a 10-week package. Each week we put something different in there to address the molecular structure. Uh, level two is a... So level one is a six-week package, my bad. Level two is a 10-week package, and level three is a 14-week package. And all of them, each week we add something different depending on what you're suffering from. So usually you'll do a consultation with me or Kawhi, or on the site you'll go on and you'll be able to put what you got going on, and we address it and we'll switch out things according to each different week to address your so-called dis-ease, or I'm going to say to help your body further heal and detoxify itself because that's all the body is doing. It's not really no disease. What should I do for bad asthma and eczema? Asthma, you're dealing with the bronchial tubes. Get off all lactic acid. Lactic acid or what we're going to call dairy products is one of the number one carcinogenic things that you can do to create asthma. Uh, and it's mucus. It's mucus buildup. Mucus buildup with inside of the bronchial tubes or with inside the alveoles of the lungs or with inside the respiratory system, period. The best way to cleanse your lungs is fenugreek. Fenugreek will cleanse the lungs. Mullen leaf. Mullen leaf will cleanse the lungs. Colt's foot. Colt's foots will cleanse the lungs. Lung wart. Lung wart will cleanse the lungs. Mix all these three together. Use hot water. Steep your tea. Do not boil them because if you boil them too long, you will destroy the molecular, the molecular electrical structure of the plant. We just need to get it hot enough to break through the cellulose to bring out all the hilo constituents. But do all equal parts of what I said. You're going to drink two eight ounce glasses of these twice a day in the morning, in the evening. Get off of all meat. Get off of all dairy. Go on an all fruit and vegetable diet. 80% fruits, watery fruits. Then go 20% watery vegetables. Give yourself a month. And that asthma will be healed right up. I didn't heal so many people. Of, well, the herbs, the, the herbs that help. Let me say it this way. The herbs that help. The herbs that I put together that help the body heal so many chronic asthmas. It's crazy, y'all. I'm talking about chronic asthmas. So that's easy. That's easy work. All right, y'all, I'm finna get up out of here. Hopefully y'all got this whole video. I will be putting this video up on YouTube. Uh, it's somewhere in there where I said gay though. I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'm gonna have Jay take that out. Cause I don't want them to they're gonna try anything to take this video down because I'm talking about the difference uh between our molecular structures. So I said gay. I said Cedra Borshore was a gay homosexual who had sex with his brother. So I got to take that out. 
So I'm going to take that out and then I'm going to upload this on my other channels, family. All right, with that being said, peace, love, light, of healing, peace, love, light, of healing, peace to the gods, peace to the earth. For those who want to see me, I will be in San Diego at the World Cultural Beat Center with Mama Makeda on the 23rd, talking about Earth Day. I'm bringing some magnificent information that you would love to listen to. Uh, on the 4th, I will actually be in New York, Harlem, New York at the Apollo with 19 Keys. Click the link in the bio, grab your tickets. Uh, Monday, we're going to be introducing the next HBCU that we're going to be at. We on tour. We everywhere with it. A lot of work being getting done. The site is still down, but the site will be back up on the 21st, family. You can go back to the site on the 21st to order your herbs, or you can go to the site now and read the prompt that we have there. Follow the instructions to get your herbs now. With that being said, I love y'all. I need a have a thumb. Mishpati. Peace, love, light, and healing. Peace to the gods. Peace to the earth. Shalom, shalom, laka. Blessings.